Welcome to Virtual Worship with Northley United. Our mission at Northley is to love God, nurture the Spirit, connect with others, and serve the world. Thank you for joining us in worship. To learn more about us, visit our website at northleyunited.ca. Hello and welcome to Northley United Church's Virtual Worship. I'm Leanne and the minister here at Northley. Um, I would like to just welcome Ambry Stewart today who will be offering a message to us um, regarding Ezekiel. So welcome Ambry and thank you to everyone who is participating in leading today's service. I also want to just draw your attention to our annual general meeting which is this Sunday. If you want to uh, know more about how to connect, just go to our news bites, our most recent news bites for information. And with that, uh, I would like to also acknowledge with respect the history, tradition and spirituality of the Mississaugas of the Credit who came to this place long before we did and our responsibility for the territory on which our church and our homes reside. Let us continue now with our call to worship. The prophet asks, can we, our soul-weary bones live again? Oh God, you know. We ask, can we dance again after mourning, loss and grief? Oh God, you know. The gift is sure and unmistakable. God's breath poured out as new life for weary souls. Let us celebrate the gift of God's new life and come to worship God with hope. National Nurses Week is ending and so this morning I would like to light the Christ candle for the nurses. Chances are you or a loved one has been cared for by a nurse. They see us at our worst and they give us their best. They care for us when we're unable to and during COVID they've held the hand of our loved ones when in the place of us. And so this morning I light the Christ candle for the nurses both working and retired. 
You have a gift, and you are a gift. And we thank you. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Compassionate God, the wind of your spirit is the very sign of life for all who long for you. One breath from you and we are rescued from the arid valley of dry bones, given muscles and sinews and joy with which to praise you and filled with the holy hope you grant to all your faithful children. Let our whole lives be filled with the life breath of the Spirit, for what has lain dormant may burst into bloom, and what looks to us to be death may be revealed as but sleep before the emergence of new life. Amen. Scripture reading for today is taken from the scroll of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through to 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there, there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied and, and as he had commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, 
and I will place you on your own soil, then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of God comes to us from these words. Thanks be to God for the gift of scripture. Amen. First, I would like to thank the worship committee here at North Lee for inviting me to preach the sermon for this in-between Sunday. Last Sunday was Mother's Day. Next week is Pentecost Sunday. Both these are usually joyous and celebratory days in the church year. On Mother's Day, we celebrate the blessing of our families. Even teenagers who are usually allergic to all things churchy will show up for mom. When I was a boy, everyone wore a flower to church on Mother's Day. If your mother was alive, you wore a red flower. And if not, you wore a white flower. Next week is Pentecost Sunday, which celebrates the coming of the Holy Spirit into the world. Pentecost is celebrated 50 days after Easter and is regarded as the birthday of the church. It is the last major feast day of the church year. Today, however, is the in-between Sunday. Not much to celebrate today. So here we are, waiting around for something to happen. We are in a kind of in-between time in the pandemic right now as well. We celebrated the arrival of vaccines a few months ago and, and then most of us waited around for our turn. By now, some of us have had one shot, but very few of us have managed to get our second shot and be fully protected. That's too bad because a third wave of infection has just crashed in on us. Hospital staff are being stressed as intensive, bed, intensive care beds fill up. Another lockdown has been ordered in many provinces. So we stay at home. We try to be careful. Many of us have had to suspend planning for our summer. We are hoping for the best, but we are getting stressed out. We are in between partial vaccinations and a final end to the pandemic, another kind of in-between time. And we acknowledge that in-between times are stressful. We navigate our way through each good news, bad news day. We would like to get back to normal in the church, but it is very clear that we can't do that yet. For this year, as well as last year, Mother's Day and Pentecost have to be very different because of COVID. We are not able to get together and celebrate as usual. Last year, we were getting used to wearing a mask and practicing social distancing to avoid infecting one another. This year, we think we can see light at the end of the tunnel, and we're all getting really, really tired of this. We want COVID to be over, and we are becoming increasingly annoyed that we are still not back to normal. For many of us, that annoyance is now turning into increasing levels of anxiety. It's getting harder to keep the darkness of this pandemic at bay. The children are missing their friends. They are tired of being locked down at home in front of a computer screen. All of us are adapting as best we can, but we're getting to the end of our endurance. We want to get back to church. We want to see our friends again. We want to shake their hands again. We want to give them a hug. Enough already. Is there anything that our faith can do to help us in this difficult pandemic time? 
Is there any guidance in scripture, perhaps, or in the life of the church? Perhaps there is. Perhaps in this in-between Sunday, we can find some strength to handle the tedium of every day of our lives right now. So, let's begin. I invite you to take a deep breath in front of your computer screen or wherever you are. Try to let go of the stress of your daily life during the last week. And now, let us pray. God of all good news and bad news, we come to you now anxious about the times we live in, worried for our families and loved ones during this pandemic time. Give us some peace right now, O oh Lord. Help us to listen for your voice as we prepare to navigate our path through the coming weeks. We pray in the name of Christ, the living one. Amen. The reading for this day from Ezekiel was written during the almost 60 year period of the Babylonian captivity between 597 BCE when the Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar conquered Jerusalem and 539 BCE when King Cyrus of Persia defeated the Babylonians, a large number of Jewish captives were exiled from their homeland and held in Babylonia. In these 58 years that the Jewish captives were prisoners in a foreign land, they had no freedoms, no freedom of speech or assembly or travel, no freedom of religion, no freedoms of any kind, the kinds of freedoms that we all take for granted. Many of the Israelites would die in captivity, they would never see their beloved Jerusalem again. Many others would be born into captivity and they would not experience their homeland firsthand until their captors were themselves defeated and they were finally released and allowed to return home. It was a terrible time, much worse than our relatively brief one year and counting pandemic. We can begin to feel their pain when we read Psalm 137, which was written back then. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows there, we hung up our harps. For there our captors asked us for songs and our tormentors asked for mirth saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. It was a terrible thing for the Jews in exile to be separated from the temple in Jerusalem because the temple was thought to be the place where God lived. While they were in exile, then they were separated from God. And so they asked, how could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Perhaps we have the same view about our church building. Perhaps we feel that we can only worship God when we are physically gathered together in our congregations. Is this the only place, the only time where we really can worship? The scriptures assure us that God's spirit is not confined to any human structure, not a particular building, not a particular group of people. God's spirit is like the wind. It blows wherever and whenever it wants to blow. Even when the Israelites were in exile, even when we are confined to our houses during a pandemic. And all that 
brings us to today's reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel had been a priest in the Jerusalem temple and ended up being one of the religious leaders of the people who went with them into their Babylonian exile. Today's reading tells the story of God's spirit bringing life back into the world from a place of death and desolation. The hand of the Lord comes upon Ezekiel, his prophet, lifts him up and carries him into the middle of a valley that had once been a battlefield. The ground was covered with human remains, but only the bones were left. They were very dry and were bleached white in the hot sun. For Ezekiel, the priest, this would have been a scandalous place for a prophet of God to be since this field of dead bodies was unclean. Human corpses were thought to be abhorrent to God. If the priest came into contact with one, he would become ritually unclean and would be required to go through certain purification rites before he could serve again in the temple. So why had God's spirit brought his prophet to this wretched place of dead bodies. God speaks, mortal, can these bones live? To which the prophet answers, oh, Lord God, you know. Ezekiel wasn't going to decide for God whether these bones should live or not. Such a thing is up to God and only up to God. So God tells Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones. And when he does, the bones come together again and flesh and sinews appear on the bones and the whole, whole army is resurrected before his eyes. The story, this story is a message of hope for the people of Israel living in exile in Babylon, away from their homeland, away from God's house, the Jerusalem temple, the place where everyone thought that God lived. Ezekiel claimed that their God was still with them, even in their captivity. It told them that God had not been confined to the temple in Jerusalem and that God was active among them, even in this strange land. And God had power even there to bring life out of death and even here as well. This is a message that we hear and we can also hear in our pandemic time. Perhaps we thought that God lived in our church buildings, that God was only there for us in the quiet sanctuaries we had come to love. Perhaps it was only here listening to the music, singing the familiar hymns together that we were able to find God, able to find peace. And we yearn to get back to in-person worship again. Right now, we may feel separated, separated from our friends and separated from God. But then God speaks to Ezekiel again. Prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied that he is as he had commanded me and, and the breath came into them and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. This powerful scripture is sometimes read on Pentecost next week because God's spirit comes as a wind or as a breath blowing through the church as it once blew through the valley of the dry bones. In the Hebrew language, ruach is the word for spirit. Ruach is also the word for wind. So we think of the spirit of God as a wind blowing through our lives. Our breath is our response to God's spirit giving us life. At the beginning of creation, God is imagined to be a spirit or a wind hovering over the dark waters. From the spirit or the winds of God, the universe was created in the beginning. And from the spirit or the winds of God, we alone, all of us, receive our lives. We recognize the connection between the gift of life 
and the spirit of God when we sing enthusiastic hymns like I feel the winds of God today, today my sail I lift, or, or the more prayerful breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew. In this time of pandemic, we especially need to remember that the life-giving winds of God are still blowing through the universe, just as they were in the beginning when the Spirit hovered over the waters of creation, just as they were when Ezekiel wrote the story about the dry bones, just as they were on the day of Pentecost when the mission of the church began, and just as they are right now when our churches are closed and we keep our distance from one another to stay safe from the threat of infection. One of the challenges that we are facing just now is that someone else breathing on us is thought as a threat to our well-being rather than as a source of life. For the past year, we have been warned that the coronavirus can infect us if we get too close to someone who is carrying the disease. So we wear a mask, we keep our distance, we don't sing hymns or gather in person as a congregation. It is in times like this that we need to make a sharp distinction between the winds of God that give life and every blessing that comes from being alive and our own breath, which without our ever suspecting it can be a source of illness and even death to others right now. And so we as individuals and as part of the body of Christ follow the rules established by science and government authorities to keep one another safe and to protect the vulnerable in our midst. It is good that we do this, but we must also admit that not all people of faith agree to follow the scientific guidelines. An Angus Reid poll released just before Easter this year found that 58% of Canadians who regularly attend worship services before the pandemic believed restrictions or in-person attendance were appropriate. They thought even that these restrictions could have been tighter and it still would have been okay. But 39% said the restrictions were too harsh compared with other public venues such as restaurants or gyms or bars, which were granted greater leniency for opening. But the poll also found that there is a hunger to return to in-person services with 85% of church going Canadians saying that they are very keen. They are looking forward to coming back to returning. The president of the organization that did the survey said that the main finding of the poll is that people really miss and want to get back to in-person services. At the same time, people saw that God is not in a building. God is also inside us, she said. The God inside each one of us is the same God who appears through scripture, pouring out God's spirit on all creation. I believe it is this same God who has worked through the brilliance of human intelligence that has created the vaccines that will protect us from the ravages of this pandemic, a pandemic that is still raging in our world. Despite the limitations on our worship and the rest of our lives, we continue to be blessed by God's spirit blowing through our lives. I think it is helpful for us to remember this as we prepare to observe Pentecost Sunday next week. As God's people, we must continue to persevere right now as the pandemic remains a threat. We can help by following the guidelines of the doctors and medical scientists, getting the vaccine as soon as we are able to do so, by reaching out to one another in love, using the safe ways available to do so. God is with us, even here, even now, in our kind of exile time. We are not alone.
Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who always listens to us, who breathes new life into us, call us forward to resurrection. We are surrounded by a world of dry bones, a world of death and despair, a world where we lose hope in our structures, ourselves and you. We pray for this world in need of your word and for all the people in it for those who lay down their lives in service to others, and for those who lead faithfully and wisely, guided by you, Lord. O God, who always listens to us, who breathes new life into us, call us forward to resurrection. There are people all around us who long for your energising power to rekindle their lives and help them to see a future filled with hope. We pray for all in need of your healing presence, for those who are imprisoned or alone, who are frightened, ill or infirm or grieving, especially any known to us. O oh God, who always listens to us, who breathes new life into us, call us forward to resurrection. We trust you, Lord, to breathe your spirit into us, that we may share your love with others and lead them to a closer walk with you. O oh God, who always listens to us, who breathes new life into us, call us forward to resurrection. And now, together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us away from temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. I think it's pretty difficult for us not to see in this time of year the, the beauty of new life and the possibility of new life. May that be what we hold in our hearts this week, knowing too that God is always with us, that Christ walks among us, and the Spirit is working through us and among us always. Amen. And for that, we thank you. May the peace of Christ be with you all. <laughs> the light went out. <laughs>